thing in your nightmare, that thing that's holding you back, that thing that's dragging you down, that thing is you. You will not outwork me. And the whole gig is just a giant hustle. That's all it is. Life is just a hustle. That's all life is. One giant hustle. Over here at Randy's shop tonight and we are gonna hang these doors so I'm gonna try to cover this again I have covered this in the past on a previous video but we're gonna try to do it again for all the new subscribers if your doors are off or your alignment fits like crap you know or the door sags whatever your problem is we're gonna try to run through it tonight and uh, hopefully help you out with some basic tips some basic pointers and show you how it's done so let me flip the camera around real fast and I'll show you where we're starting at. all right so we are starting with no hinges on. So we just pulled our old hinges off. So the hinges that were on the car were these removable ones for the lightweight carbon doors. We're going all steel, all glass. So we're putting steel doors back on. Um, so this is definitely probably one of the most annoyingest things or um, uh, dreadful things, I guess you could say that people don't look forward to is putting the doors back on and getting everything aligned on it it's actually not that bad if you understand a couple of very uh basic points now on this car we do have uh completely wore out and damaged uh door strikers but randy got some new ones in um you can somebody in the other uh video or the other channel or the other channel the other video said that you can just put the bushings on i told randy about the bushings and um he ended up just going ahead and replacing the whole entire striker so we are going to eventually pull these off and replace them with these new door strikers that he just got in the mail so let me show you them all right so these are the ones that he ordered okay so they have the bushing on them and everything and they have uh this black hook not sure to point that hook but it's on there here's the part numbers uh what we're gonna be using um looks like getting them from mustang restoration parts there you go so if uh, you need them there's a part number but you can also like i said if you go back to one of my other videos you can replace just the little bushing that goes right inside here supposedly so let's get at it all right so the very first thing that you're going to do is put your tape around your edges primary these okay so when you're trying to hold this door up there you're gonna wanna, it's gonna wanna drop this way because of weight, obviously you're not gonna have a problem with it too high. You can tape all the way around the perimeter if you want, but your primary damage is obviously gonna be on the bottom and on the quarter panel where you accidentally touch it. When two paint, painted surfaces hit each other, that's when you get paint chips. So we went ahead and just overlapped just a little bit, basically split, that's three quarters of an inch tape. Basically just put it right on the edge so that half of that tape is this way and half of that tape is this way, all the way around. That way, hopefully if we do bump the two together it doesn't chip the paint now we're just going to do this right here i think i'll be fine but if you obviously don't know how to paint yourself and you're not trying to paint yourself you're not trying to tear your car up make sure you put tape all the way around your perimeter and then also on your doors put tape all the way around the doors all the edges of the doors that way if any two items hit it's going to be um two pieces of tape not two painted surfaces because you don't want two painted surfaces to come in contact with each other All right, so everyone is normally worried about how to hang the actual door. And as you can see, I just did it by myself. I purposely did not want any help uh, to show that it can be done by itself. Now, get you a piece of carpet, cardboard or something to sit it down on and sit, that way if you need to take a break, sit door on it. You don't want paint touching hard stuff. That's it. That's all you have to remember. This painting stuff is not that complicated. You don't want paint touching hard items. So never touch paint to hard items sit you cardboard down to rest it on put it up there when you get it up there obviously try not to pull on your door handle too much but as you can see i just latched it in now if i open this door it is going to completely go crazy right now and jerk way down like that because we don't have the door hinges tightened at all they're just one bolt in every single one bolt in each hinge as you can see right here to make sure that the door does not fall off the car this way that's all i want for right now now i'm gonna go ahead and put the other two bolts in and then i'm gonna snug them down 
and then we're going to open the door and see how bad we drop because that's our first step is to see how bad we drop now we still have the old strikers in there i just wanted to leave them in there to get started on that should get me close it looks like my body line is pretty decent right now let's see here yes yeah, so our height is not terrible it's sagging just a little um but that's where i wanted to get started on since i had a reference point and then i can go back and as soon as i got this thing open and closing then i'm going to change the strikers you can change the strikers if you want first um this is just how i wanted to do it to get started with so let's snug this uh snug these down put the other two in snug them down and we'll open the door and see how bad we are on our first uh on our first right, try so check this out when you're first going to set your uh door hinges initially from the start uh everybody makes this so complicated and it's really not if you put just a little bit of thought into it um you don't want to just throw these up here now these are loose right now they were the door's pushing out on them let's see here okay see that so these are loose okay this one down here we'll show you this one this is an excellent example since i only have one hand so this is loose you don't want to just have it sitting there and tighten the bolts down okay you don't want the hinge okay this hinge to be sent like this you don't want it to be like this okay you don't want to start out like that because that means as soon as you open that end of the door like this if this hinge is already like that then that end of the door is just going to fall even more okay so if the door is like this you want the hinge like this if you have play now in a perfect world where hinges have no play then the door would be straight and the hinges would all be straight and it would open up perfect that's in a perfect world it's probably never going to be a perfect world for your car unless you're completely doing a high-end restoration and even if you're doing high-end restoration you still own something that doesn't have any play in it you still want to kind of index the hinges just a little bit like this or make sure there's no slop in them so that the door does not fall you don't i mean it's we're gonna have to make some changes but we don't want to purposely set ourselves up for failure or back you know from the start anyway so go ahead and take your your hands on your hinges and just cock them like that you watch the hinge right here you don't want it you know you can see how it's up like that so we want want it up like that we want to make sure it's down like that you can see the play right there okay so we want to just make sure they're like that we want to push in on that side and pull down on this side like that and then we want to snug them up and we want to do the same on both of them all right now i went ahead and opened this up because of course i only have one hand but i want to go ahead and show you our very first from the start how bad this is how that bad this door is sagging so it took a lot of uh tension to kind of get it to pull off but you can see right here how bad that is that's how bad everything dropped whenever i opened it up so we obviously can't close it right now and you can see let me see if I can show you the play in this. Okay. So even though I index that with my hands down there, it's still got a ton of play. And you're only indexing that because you're just trying to set yourself up as much as possible. So now what we're going to do is we are going to purposely try to put this door up higher on this side. And then we are going to also tilt the hinges like that again and then account for them falling. So we're going to take the door and we'll set it higher than it's supposed to be. We'll tighten our hinges, let the door relax, and then see where we're at. So we always wanna go up past where it's supposed to be to account for the fall that's gonna happen on the door. All right, at this point, you can see that I messed with adjustments. The first time that I jacked it up, I jacked it all the way up to where this was pretty much touching that. And then when I let off of that, I didn't have enough drop. So I had to go back and uh, lower the jack a little. So there was about this much gap on the, between the door, loosen the top hinge, and it dropped now, right down. Now it is hanging on 100% of its door hinge by itself. So it looks like it is close, okay? It's still high. Let's see here. Actually, the camera makes it look really bad, but in person, it's not. But I'm also not squatting down that low. Let's see here. Let's look at that byline. Yeah, okay. So we're way up. I thought we were up maybe like a quarter. It looks like we're up like maybe a half an inch. So we're going to repeat that process again. What we're going to do is, because I'm trying to get just get close before I mess with my striker, is so we're going to take our jack. Make sure you cover your jack with a rag on both sides so that it doesn't dig into that rocker panel. We're going to take it up, and we're going to almost touch the door, but not quite. So you can see I can get my fingers underneath it. 
Uh, we'll go just a little bit more, bump it up a little bit more. All right, and now we're gonna go back, loosen these bolts again, and let the door fall one more time and see what we got. So the hinges are still loose right there, and you gotta also pay attention up here. Make sure that you're not already, if the door sags down too low, then this is gonna make contact with this. So you have to make sure that you're at least clearing that like I am right there, which it looks like my door is still just a touch too high maybe. I don't know, that might be really close. But what matters is that, you know, we have got it down as low as we can right now without it gonna touch that. So now I'm gonna tighten these, snug these bolts up, and then we will see what we got. But you gotta also pay attention to this top up here and what it looks like whenever it's gonna close in. All right, so one thing that you already have, I can already show you right out the gate, is that when we're starting to close this, we have our body lines pretty much dead on. So my body lines are pretty freaking dead on, okay? But if you look up top, so if you look at your body lines, okay, and they're all dead on, if you're gonna argue anything, you'd say the door's up higher. But then if you look up here, look at this gap, okay? That is huge. That is definitely not gonna work. So I have put this piece of rubber right here because this car does not have door seals. And when you close it, it pulls it up. So it pulls it up exactly like it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So that's probably gonna, what that probably is gonna be is at the top of the frame, a lot of your Silverados and stuff, the top of the frame gets out of whack bad on them. And this, the top of this frame is probably laid in and is gonna have to be pulled out just like we do on a lot of uh, pickup trucks when they get an air gap in there. Um, if you have the seals also, that's gonna help keep that top end out for sure. But that's one thing, uh, if you get, if you see that, don't get alarmed. Go ahead and try to push it closed. Just make sure you got some rubber in there and see where you're at. So, but once it's closed, our gap, our body lines are pretty much dead on right now. All I have to do is the striker uh, next and then double check where I'm at. All right, one thing to go ahead and check right out the gate. Uh, this is your old striker right here. So this is how the car was when I got the car the first time I repainted it is it had all these washers on it. Um, I went through there and readjusted the washers to get the strikers where I wanted them to the door. Now, as you've seen, the door just closed fine. So we're gonna lay the old striker on the table and we're gonna lay the new striker on the table and then we're gonna compare the heights difference. So you can see that the height difference is different, um, but it looks like all we need to do is just transfer one of our washers over from the old stack to the new stack because it's looking like it's that right there. But if we would have moved our two washers or if you have shims in yours or whatever, if we would have moved these two over to here, then we would have been setting ourselves up for failure even more right out of the gate. The whole the whole thing with this is that y'all struggle and comment that, you know, you struggle with this because a lot of often you're doing too many things is setting yourself up for failure right out the gate uh, versus setting yourself up for success by just doing little things. So you're less likely to have a problem. So everything will go smoother. You know, if you just rip out an old part and don't even compare it like that, then you're, you're just introducing more problems that you don't even need. Now, this car was just painted, if you remember, uh, not even a year ago or about a year ago. So I don't have much scarring on the paint to go off of. I have a little bit, but not a ton. So sadly, this is gonna pretty much almost be reset from scratch. Uh, I'm gonna try to go off of the paint markings. If you have an old car, you're gonna be in the best of luck because you're really gonna be able to see where that striker was sitting at and you're gonna be able to start right back in the same location, which is kind of a neutral location. You know, you don't wanna just put it in here like this and just let all the gravity hang down because you can see back there where the paint was wore off. So we wanna take this thing and I'm probably gonna have to do this off camera but we're gonna wanna do it like that right there, see? So we're gonna move it up to about where it was already wore off, and then we're gonna snug it down. And I'm guessing that what this piece is for is right here, um, is gonna be support. It looks like it's support, because it's literally sitting tight back on there. So it looks like when you slam the door, it's just gonna be support to help this thing from twisting and getting out of whack, because it pretty much touches the striker on this side, so that's, uh, pretty cool because I was not sure exactly what that's for. So we're gonna get this pretty much, I want it a little bit looser. Oh no, that's all the way up, okay? So my strikers were already pretty much all the way up. All right, so now we're gonna snug them down and close the door and see what we got. Right, so on the first test, and I just tested it of course to make sure that I knew we're gonna slam it shut so it won't shut all the way and it does that spring back out, okay? So if you can hear it, it springs back out. It's not double latching. So it can't go in far enough for it to double latch and it's sticking out just a touch. So 
once it double latched it would pull itself all the way in so what we want to do now is we want to loosen that striker back up and move that striker back out because that striker was adjusted to the carbon doors not these steel doors so i'm going to open this back up loosen my striker up pull it out towards me just a little bit tighten it back down and then reclose my doors and check it and you gotta remember i have quite a bit of tension on it because of my issue going on up top uh, these tops really need to be bent out i'm not super comfortable with that uh, so i'm not doing that right this second once i can get everything where this and this way matches then i can have randy try to tweak the top out some if he wants let's uh, adjust this striker. all right so i've already moved this striker probably 20 times i like to be honest with y'all so you understand that this is not just you so you don't get frustrated um, and I still just can't get my double latch. So when the door closes, it latches once and then it double latches where it's really hard. So what, or where it's really secure. So what I'm having an issue with is the double latch on this car. Now I just had that piece of rubber in there, but I took the rubber piece out so it can stop fighting me and fitting the door out. I made sure that the door is not going to tear the paint up, which is not, it clears like that. So as you can see, I have more to go in now. And now without that rubber in there, the door will close right up but it doesn't, it doesn't double latch. So I can get it where it's closed like that, where it's flush, but it's not on the, the two-step. It's not on the second latch. So normally that means you need to bring your striker out farther, but when I, I'm pretty sure I have it set right now, it's far out. So I'm gonna try it again, I'm gonna loosen it up, see if I can get that striker to come out farther. Um, you don't have any adjustment in your door right here because these screws are countersunk. So they countersunk in and they center this exactly where they're gonna be. So that just is what it's gonna be. So it's all gotta be in that. So I'm gonna loosen this up again. See if I can get the striker out. If you're not getting your double latch, your striker probably needs to come out. Uh, let me see if I can get it. All right, so I went ahead and was double checking this. and Randy actually solved the issue, but I took my striker off and I said, okay, let's see if we can get the, the door latch two-step. So when it goes in one time, okay, it latches like that but then you can't get it to go in again no matter how much you push it in you cannot get it to go in and me and randy did it over here all right so we take that one back out and he said that he then thought that he remembered that that's the reason why they took the rubber or the plastic bushings off of these it's because they couldn't get that to work and i was like man that don't make no sense so we tried it like this without it let's see here if i can do it one-handed all right, so there's our first one. There's our second one. How crazy is that? So if y'all have any recommendations, uh, leave them in the comment. Eject though, of why this new one with the bushing, why this won't go onto the second latch, but this one without the bushing is. Uh, my guess right now is told Randy's, I'm guessing they have two different size bushings or something. Uh, this bushing is just too tight, uh, but it just, it will not go on into the second lock. Uh, no matter how hard you push it or slam it. So uh, I guess we're gonna put these back in for right now. I will probably go ahead and put this flat piece back on because uh, that's pretty nice. But um, until we figure things out. So we got a door on. We're dealing with the same problem we had before we had the carbon doors on. Uh, so make sure if you're watching this video, read through the comments because one of my subscribers probably gave us the answer in the comments. Um, and you'll find the comments there because these guys on my channel are ridiculously smart. Um, so I've got all my body lines lined up okay all of our gap looks good around the edge which i mean that's just is what it is kind of i didn't really even mess with that um and the rubber washer or the rubber piece is back in there now now randy's still missing a piece inside the door handle here so i'm using a zip tie but that thing opens and one other thing you can do is you can look right here okay and you see your striker up in there you can kind of eyeball it okay and make sure it's at the right height like this so you can look in there and kind of high eyeball it and it should and it should it should hit that v right there perfectly center so when you're eyeballing it in there it should be going about right there perfectly in the center and then all you got to deal with is your in and out up and down like that but when we close this there's your first one there's your second one and when it's on the second one it is flush down the body like that so all of our body lines look good everything is lined up i think this one's good all we got to do is figure out now why um, why we're having to use one with the cut rubber bushing. What are we doing wrong guys? What are we missing? Um, but this should help you get your doors on and yours lined up. And then, uh, you just got to read the comments to see what we talked about. 
in the comments on this and why this won't this won't work now this won't work for me but this might work for you these new ones might work perfectly fine for you uh this is probably gonna be a case by case because obviously they wouldn't sell this if this didn't work uh maybe you'll get lucky and your old ones will work fine some people also wrap electrical tape or painters tape around that to take some of the slack out maybe i'll go try to do that real fast with a little bit of tape i don't know um at least they latch he can go racing for now and then once we figure these out we can change this out on this door I also took one of the washers off. So we are now only running one washer plus the big washer because with the two big washers on there and the steel doors on here now, when I closed it, this washer right here was actually wanting to drag against this little lip right here around this. So that means it needed to be moved in if it's wanting to kind of drag against it. So you might have to move yours in and out also. You want pretty much this latch right here to fall center. And it's, it's literally, guys, it's just a testing thing, you know? If your striker is too far in, then this round piece right here will actually be smashing that and it won't obviously latch. You can put some white paint or black paint across this or Sharpie, make it really wet with a little bit of paint with a paintbrush or something, touch up paint, and then close it and you'll be able to see exactly where it hits or just take some yellow uh, tape or whatever and wrap one band around it, close it, and you'll be able to see where it scars the tape or makes the tape indention. And then that will also help you determine if you need to move that striker in or out. So the tape's probably the easiest and the less messiest. Uh, but you gotta also figure your in and out, which that's that's not hard. Y'all just, it just takes a little bit of patience um, and a little bit of effort. All right, now we're not showing how to do this door, but I wanna point out an issue that we have on this door that we don't have another door that you may have. So I'm done with this door um, on this side, but the door is out farther, if you can see, okay, down here than it is up here. So it's in up there, okay? And if we look down this way, I don't know if the camera will be able to capture it. Uh, anyway, you're gonna have to trust me. The door is in more than a quarter panel. And then down here, the quarter panel is in whereas the door is out so meaning the door needs to roll like this the top of this door needs to roll out and the bottom needs to roll in now to get yours to do that what you would do is you would come right here and you would put shims in this top of this hinge so to get this door to roll out like that you would put some body shims harbor freight sells them or washers behind this to just pull this hinge out a little so that the door would roll. So that's all this really needs. Uh, now you would say, well, the bottom is sticking out. You can't go in. You don't need to go in. If you'll bring your top out equal to it sticking out past the quarter as much as the bottom of the door is sticking out, okay, and it's parallel, basically, so the top and the bottom are both sticking out, then you can take your striker and move your striker in and the whole door will walk straight in. You see what I'm saying? You just gotta fix this alignment first like this, then you can set your in and out. Right now, we're crooked from the quarter panel. Now, that could also be body work. If you go back to the first time I did this car, put a lot of body work on this quarter panel. So our body work could be out a little bit farther, but I don't have shims, body shims here tonight um, and I'm just trying to get this thing 90% uh, correct and uh, for tonight to get this thing back to the track. So that's that's what needs to happen. But I just wanted to point that out in case you're running into that same issue so you'll understand to just, whichever one is farther in, bring it out, then take your striker, move your striker in and out, and you can walk the whole thing. You just gotta get like this set first. If this helped you set your doors and get your doors back on your car, just do me one favor. Hit the like button down below. That is plenty. Thank you for me. That's all I'm asking out of you is just hit that like button and hopefully you'll stick around and I'll catch you on the next video. Hopefully I can help you again. Thanks y'all.